We're at VMworld 2017. I'm joined by Rob Cummings, VP of Corporate Marketing at Teja. How you doing, Rob? Pretty good. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. So what do you guys got going on the show? You always got something going on. I was remembering last year you had the ACDC thing. Now you look like you're getting ready to get into a, a pit crew thing. Yeah, we got the Teja pit crew thing going yeah. on. You know, Very we've cool. got a really cool looking um, Audi uh, R8 V10, even faster than the one we had last year, which is kind of rolls right into our theme. Our, our arrays this year, our newly announced N-Series with NVMe, are even faster than the ones the all-flash with the SAS back end that we had last year. So let's talk about that. How do you make an array faster, right? Because with it, once you go all-flash, so I think a lot of people think, well, I'm done, right? I'm done, but right? there's some stuff you could do, right? Right. So it's interesting. The, the flash drives themselves are a lot faster than the SAS interconnect that most of us have been using right. for the past five years. So they kind of blocked out. Right. So we had to figure out how to, how to pull, that, pull that block out of there. So what we figured out is the SAS interconnect we used as we get faster, at about, uh, let's say, 200,000 IOPS, right. that SAS bus runs out of gas. So it just gets saturated. Right, and okay. the latency goes crazy. Okay. This NVMe, we can get well past 700,000 IOPS, and it keeps going and going and going. It's giving us a lot of breathing room. And this guy here can only handle 32 concurrent commands. Mm -hmm. This guy can handle 4 billion commands. So it completely blows the doors off the uh, interconnect and allows these SSDs to do what they're really built to do. But now you guys are doing some unique things there because I know we talked a little while ago about how you have like a hybrid system that's NVMe and, and still right. SAS, right? So right. How, how does that look? Yeah, so what we've been noticing is people used to think you've got disk and you've got flash, right. and that's it. Yep. Well, the flash guys have kind of looked at the technology and said, I got NVMe now that's super fast, but then cost per gigabyte is always super important. So you got another segment of the flash market that's kind of chasing that capacity optimized, I like to call cheap and deep. Right. So we actually kind of pulled back into our hybrid laurels that we built the company on and said, aha, now I can build a multi-tiered flash system that based on the customer's requirements, I can dial up or dial down the ratio of fast flash versus deep flash. Okay, so I can. So part of it's SAS and part of it's NVMe. Right, because the cheap and deep stuff can still live down here. Okay. We we kind of handle that in the back end, and the customers right. don't experience this. All of the I/O back to the host Goes is happening up here. Yep. So how does the customer then strike the balance between performance and capacity? How does that work? Sure. So architecturally, what we do is we put a layer of fast flash okay. here, and then we put a deep layer of flash down here. Okay. And then all the I.O. coming in and out using our real-time caching algorithms right. comes out of here. Okay. And then our software in the back end will move data up and down here. So the customers don't really experience this SAS latency. That's all buried and embedded that's, in the that's system. That's your old intelligent data movement technology that you had that's, for a long That's time, what's right? beautiful. We didn't have to make some massive architectural leap and have induced technology risk here. We've been doing this for almost six years now. Right. So instead of these being hard drives, these are just flash drives. Exactly. Right. Yep. And I, I think this is interesting because, you know, one of the things that when in the early days of hard, uh, hybrid arrays, the customers would always ask, but what's my performance going to look like if there's a miss? And right. you kind of, it's really hard to guess at that, right? Right. Here, there's almost, from that perspective, I, I would doubt that they would even notice because the delta now is so small, right? Well, what's amazing is now these guys are running at about 0.2 milliseconds, right. where these guys are running at 1 to 2 milliseconds, and back in the day, disk drives were running 15 milliseconds. So there's a big delta here. Right. Now you're doing here and here. There's still upwards of a 10x, but it's so much faster than what people right. are used to that it'll be, it'll be faster, but it's not like, oh gosh, my application's going to die because I'm getting a one or two exactly. millisecond latency. And, and the number of times you're hitting this versus that is going to be similar to what we saw in the hard drive data. Yeah, we've got, we've got six years of data with the hybrid um, architecture. We know that on average, about 96% of the I.O. is coming out of that fast layer. Okay. So only 4% is coming out of this this deep layer. Right. So customers are going to feel this 96% of the time. Right. And when they do feel the 4%, they're only dealing with one or two milliseconds, right? So it's right. not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's right? 10 times faster than what they had down here. Awesome. So Rob, one of the other challenges I see a lot in the industry is everybody's trying to balance the sort of the file data and the block data and how to manage that. How, right. how are you guys dealing with that? You know, a lot of people are selling two systems now. Right. I mean, how are you guys doing it? Right. So yeah, lots of times we see our competitors say, I've got this flash system and it's fantastic but it only talks to the, the host over a block interface. Right. That you've got these capacity biased applications that tend to be file. Right. And what we get to do here is since we're a unified interface up here, now I can go fiber channel, iSCSI, 
NFS. Hey, I can't even read this. Sorry about that. <laughs> and SIFs here, all out of the exact same system. So if I've got cheap and deep type utilization over, right. let's say, NFS, that data is going to land down here pretty quick. Sure. If I've got an Oracle redo log, let's say, that data is going to last up here a long time because that, that stuff is being pounded constantly. That caching algorithm is going to keep that data up here. So it really allows the customer to kind of really consolidate it down to a single system for exactly all those different correct. use cases. That is exactly correct. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today, Rob. Appreciate you bet. it. Thanks, George. All right, take care.